The Middle Ages, despite being often romanticized in movies, weren't actually all that romantic. In fact, in relation to women, it was a time of lawlessness and punishment for the slightest offenses. Scolds The so-called cursing bridle was put on the faces of such women. It was a small muzzle with a metal dilator for the mouth. A grumpy wife's speech became slurred, so the man could enjoy incoherent sounds rather than listen to her swearing. If the woman did not stop grumbling, she could be led by the bridle around the city. The first bridle was used in Scotland. Then the tradition migrated to Great Britain. Conciliation Pillory This is another device for punishment, but already for two women. For example, if the neighbors constantly scolded each other, both of them were put on such improved pillory, known to many from movies. The main difference was that it was designed for two women at once. So, in such a way, both of them walked around the city until, at last, their contradictions were resolved. Conciliation pillories were used most widely in Austria and Germany. Punishment for adultery with a stool Women convinced of fornication or adultery were seated on the so-called stool of repentance. Depending on this place, it was made of wood or equipped with metal brackets. A wanton woman was fixed on a stool and placed outside the house, and anyone who passed by could express their contempt. A more cruel version of the punishment was the installation of a stool with a culprit in the city square. In this case, anyone who wished could spit on the woman and throw something at her. The most cruel variation of such a punishment was tying a stool to a pole and holding the unfortunate woman over a pond. Several men were holding the pole on one side while the poor woman was sitting on the other hand. Periodically, the pole was lowered into the water, which was believed to cool bodily desires. The number of dips into the water was determined by the court. As a rule, few survived after this, dying from hypothermia or a cold. By the way, if the woman swore a lot, and even after the punishment did not change her habits, she could expect a really cruel fate, burning at the stake. For example, as a witch. Pillar of the Shame This punishment has been practiced in medieval Europe since the beginning of the 12th century. However, not only women but also men were tied to the pole, after which she stood tied up for at least a day. Traditionally, anyone could insult her, throw something, and express their contempt. A woman could be tied to a pole even at denunciation by neighbors. For example, full out screams, extramarital sex, expressing displeasure with something, and so on. Deprivation of beauty Infidelity usually came at a high cost for women. For example, one of the most common and cruel punishment was the public cutting off the nose. Sometimes the ears could be cut off as well. Naturally, the victim of such punishment immediately became an outcast, since anyone understood why the beautiful woman was deprived of her nose and ears. In addition, for adultery, a woman could be quartered or burned at the stake. The type of punishment was determined by local authorities, or usually by a crowd, which was always thirsty for a cruel show. While a man usually could get away with adultery, a woman, depending on the situation, could be even sentenced to death. For example, in cases when a man declared that he was allegedly seduced and fell under the spell of a woman, in this case, torture and painful death at the stake could await the unfortunate woman. March of Condemnation As a rule, it was also used for extramarital sexual relations. The crowd often punished the culprit without even getting permission from the church or local authorities. A woman could be dragged out of bed at night and led through the city by the whistling, hooting, and insults of the crowd. Flogging this punishment was used by men against their wives both inside a family and, in a case of significant infringement, 
also in the public square. The procedure of punishment was similar to a tying to a pole. The crowd was first told what the guilty part had been sentenced for, how many strokes of the cane and lashes had been imposed, and then the punishment procedure began. In Russia, for example, flogging was one of the most common punishments of women by their husbands, not only for some falls, but also as a preventive measure. Exile for out-of-wedlock pregnancies If relatives found an unmarried woman being pregnant, she was sent to a special maternity hospital. Such punishment was practiced in Britain. The woman in the house did the dirtiest work and was scolded by the owners of the house right up to the very birth. Then the child was taken from the unfortunate woman and given for adoption, while the woman herself began to work off the money that relatives had paid for her residency in such a house. As a rule, those sent to maternity hospitals never returned. Exhausted by overwork, they often ended their days in asylums. Punishment with canes One of the strangest punishments for women was caning, both public and private, and this is because it could have happened for what was then considered one of the worst offenses. If a woman forgot to praise her husband's beard or his smile, then, with a high probability, the offended head of the family could demand satisfaction from his wife. The satisfaction was usually beating with canes. The number of strikes was decided by the husband. Punishment could be private or carried out by a representative of authority in case it was public. Burning at the stake Perhaps it was called in medieval Europe. So, burning at the stake became one of the most common execution. This punishment was invented by the Arden Spaniards, or rather the King Alfonso X of Castile. It was for entering into relationship with people of other faiths, Arabs, Moors, or Jews. The unfortunate was sentenced to be burned at the stake. True, there were some concessions. If it was a prostitute, then, for violation the rules of the provision of services, she was simply beaten with wrath. If it was a young and innocent girl, then half of her property was confiscated to the treasury. It was the so-called warning. But if a woman was noticed in connection with the Gentiles for the second time, then the punishment was inevitable. She was doomed to public burning at the city square. By the way, if a married woman committed the sin, then it was her husband who decided her fate. However, the quick-tempered Spaniards knew no mercy, and already after the first time they sent their spouses into the fire. Women, in addition to all of the above, could be burned simply for their pretty appearance, all for refusing to be in bed with a religious minister or a noble citizen. Of course, the accusation sounded somewhat different, for example, as connection with an evil force. But in fact, unfortunate women often became victims of the revenge of the men they rejected. Fines. In Russia, this was practiced as a humane way of punishment. If a woman happened to lay a hand on her husband, he could complain to the authorities who sentenced her to pay a fine of three rubles and the fine had to be paid to the treasury. Considering that three rubles by those standards was a very large sum of money, when even a ruble was sometimes not enough for the whole village, such fine not only made a hole in the family budget, but could simply lead to poverty. Punishment for Serious Crimes These included, for example, artificial termination of pregnancy. The punishment was the same for both the midwife who performed the operation and the woman herself. In Russia, for example, such women were impaled without any ceremony, and in Europe they usually were burned at the stake. Murder was also punishable by death, and at best by deprivation of property and exile to the wild nurse. By the way, in Russia, a murderer of a person of equal or lower in status could simply be punished with a large fine.
correctional houses. It was one of the most amazing punishments in Europe. The so-called correctional houses were divided into two parts. In the first, there were thieves or prostitutes who worked of their guilt. In other words, a petty criminal element. And the second were women who usually were sent for re-education by their own husbands. For example, if a woman for some reason refused her husband in bed, she could immediately expect a visit to the house of correction. Buried alive. As a rule, this way women were punished for criminal offenses, such as theft. But in Germany, for example, for the murder of their children, including abortion, an unfortunate woman could be buried alive. 